Hi, to my esteemed viewers, this is Tutor Buxton. I would like us to continue with the estimation for steel reinforcement works on uh, superstructure columns. So far so good in our preparation of bills of quantities, we've covered quite a number of items that I would like you, if you so wish, to make a catch up with them. You will get it from the link of the playlist that is going to be attached to the description of this channel. That playlist have all the items we've covered in relation to preparation of bills of quantities. For the ones, for my viewers who are continuing with this channel, kindly let's start, let's get to the work. Preparation, this is now a reinforcement. Reinforcement to superstructure superstructure columns okay so what we are doing here it's an elaboration of uh, the part that uh, we have covered all right so this is an elaboration of what we've covered in the other in the rest of the items and for now we just want to go through how to do now the reinforcement work, steel reinforcement work on the superstructure columns. How do you go about that? So first of all, identify the columns that you have. ID simply means the columns. I mean uh, the identification. So you can either say it's C1 or C2 and so on. Okay. After that, then you have the diameter, the number, and then you have total length conversion, uh, conversion constant. Of you now converting that length into kgs and then now you have the kgs of that uh, steel reinforcement so that being said just want to delete these other items so once you have that in the previous session uh, when we are covering the reinforcement uh, reinforcement bars for the substructure columns we had covered a bit of these identifications and so on. But then, yeah, being that now at the superstructure level, the same columns that were started at the substructure are going to be uh, the same columns from the substructure to the superstructure point. Then we'll just copy what we had done in terms of the identification, which is going to be uh, for the number. Okay. So, what we're going to focus on is let's look at. Uh, uh, let's look at this point we have it here so this is now uh, uh, this is now what you call uh, the ID this is a sample of ID that we are done in terms of the bars the diameter and the number and so on so what's of interest now for the, the only point I'm going to copy here is going to be uh, for the, uh, the the column identification of the column and the number so I'm only going to use that but being that we didn't use the number we didn't use the identification here the number is what we are going to copy okay. having seen that these numbers here were subject to multiplication of uh, the number of bars in each column and then we multiplied by the number of bars the number of I mean the number of columns times the number of bars therefore we are not going to copy it because we are not sure whether they are going to be the same as what we have at the sub superstructure level. So in that case, what we are going to do, the best approach for us to adopt uh, now is going to be, one, we identify the columns from the plan. Once we've identified the, the columns from the plan, then we get to the details and look at uh, the number of those particular bars that are available. So in the ID part, we are going to identify which type of bars. Is it D16, is it D10, is it, and so on, okay? So what we can have just at the side, what we can have at the side uh, will be, these are the columns, okay? And this is column uh, C1. Column C1, and then this is column C2, this is column C3. So we'll go back to what we had done. For instance, this is uh, C1. C1, let's get to the plan and confirm how many they are. After that, 
this is now the plan so you go and count from the plan level so at the plan count how many of the c1s you have so from this i just want to do it uh, quite fast uh, because we had done it previously for the substructure part so let's see one two three four this is five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so C1, uh, there are 12 in number. These are 12. Uh, then let's see for the C2, how many they are. Uh, C2. C2, you get back to the plan and count. And count how many. I can see 2. 1, 2. Okay. Uh, those are 2. 2 number bars then uh, C3 they are only of 3 types so let's see what C3 the number for the uh, C3 uh, C3 you also count uh, from uh, let's see this is C1 C1 C3 I can only see 2 at uh, grid E E1 ok so these are also 2 so then the next point after you've identified the numbers now we go to the ID okay ID in this case is now going to mean bars in terms of the size the diameter we classify bars in relation to the diameter of those particular bars okay so we go to this this is now C1 so at C1 what do we have okay so you can always check the details from this is now what we call the section where my cursor is pointing there is a section of this column when it's viewed uh, an aerial view of uh, that particular column revealing the reinforcement bars the reinforcement bars here they have been given numbers okay you can see there is 8 stroke 05 then uh, 500 by 200 that is now the size it's 500 on the longer side and 200 millimeters on the shorter side okay then when you look at this particular bar there is 8 t16 that is pointing towards that dark line which is uh, symbolizing the reinforcement bars so it's only one that has been pointed but then there are eight of them for d16 okay so we have eight t16 i mean so how do we go about about that just want to bring it to the side here and then do my calculation just this point so that bar the identification is t16 because it's of diameter 16 millimeters the 03 simply means the bar mark the mark that has been given to that particular bar just for identification purposes all right so we are going to start with c1 so that we don't confuse ourselves once we've done c1 then you go to c2 and then you go to c3 okay so this is a uh, t16 and because it's only one there we don't need to give it uh, we don't need to mark it as a zero or rather we can say this is c1 c1 t16 for the diameter is 16 millimeters the number therefore is going to be how many of them are here for the one column it's eight and we have how many columns for c1 they are 12 okay so that is how to get the total number then uh, length length or you can call it height whichever term that you like to refer it to for that length for column you should measure the total length that is from floor to floor but then you add the overlap okay overlap is now what the part of that bar that is above the the uh, next floor so for instance it's starting from ground floor okay this is now the column the, the reinforcement bar for the uh, for the ground floor okay it's starting from the top of this slab and then it's going top of the next that is now for the first floor slab but then there is an overlap should i zoom it in that way you are able to see there is an overlap of that particular bar so that overlap is always we can all we can uh, stick to the same same uh, overlap that was given for the previous substructure for the substructure columns okay so looking at this there was an overlap of around 1146 for the substructure for the substructure level so we can stick to that same overlap for the next uh, for the rest of the bars in our estimation okay so uh, what that means is that for the first for the ground floor 
the height is 3 meters but then we need to add the overlap of 1146 okay so it's going to be equal to 3 plus 1.146 or 11.46 so that we have a total of 4.146 okay then now the total length therefore is going to be length of one bar times uh, the total number of bars that we have we get that okay then uh, length conversion factor is at 162 then for you to get the kgs of reinforcement bars is equals to d squared i'll just write it here so that you can also put it somewhere kgs or weight weight of reinforcement bars is equals to d squared okay you can say d times d where d is the diameter of the reinforcement bar then you multiply by the total total length and then the total length then you divide by you divide by 162 162 is a constant that you use when you're converting that um, the length times uh, the total uh, total the, the diameter squared then you divide by 162 okay all right so in this case let's have it let's have this so that it's yes so once you have that is equals to diameter squared do we have the diameter diameter is 16 then we multiply by another 16 okay 16 times 16 to get the diameter squared then we get the total length total length is here then we divide by 162 that gives us kgs of 1 over uh, the t16 for this uh, column c1 okay and the same that is just for one floor okay so we'll see how many they are or how they are recurring for every floor and then we multiply by it, the number of floors if at all they are not then we'll redo for that very c uh, c1 we'll have to do for a different a different um, a different diameter what i mean in some cases you might find there are different types of uh, sizes of bars for every for different floors even on one column so that's why it's not always very uh, very recommended that you take for one floor and then you multiply the total number of floors you have to confirm each and every floor what number what sizes of um, reinforcement bars are there it's a possibility that you might find different sizes of different of uh, reinforcement bars for every floor so this is column c1 ground floor is ht16 first floor ht16 and then um, when you go to second floor you can have a look at this there is eight t12 so it means at the second floor level bars are different if you go to third floor they are different if you go to fourth floor there uh, there are also t12 so that is why you need to uh, deal with them separately all right so in this case the only floors that are having the same length is a ground floor ground floor and first floor so that is we'll multiply these we'll multiply this by two okay so in this case we'll multiply by two so that times two okay in this case now we've done for ground floor and then you multiply by two number floors of the same length but then now for the next uh, for the next uh, floors we are going to copy this for the formula that we've just built up and uh, paste it here and make our edits where this is now going to be still c1 but then we have t12 instead of t16 for those other different floors so the diameter is 12 how do you do about the number the number is still 8 this number is still 8 but then the diameter is what has changed okay so we'll take 8 times the number of the columns that is 12 okay for the length is going to remain the same length is going to remain the same for uh, for this is now a second floor third floor also t12 and uh, 
and also fourth floor we are going to use the same same the same same length for the bars okay that is how we go about about that all right so the length is remaining the same uh, for the total length uh, i mean yeah the total length now it's length of one times the total number that is also same constant is also 162 still remaining to be the same this is going to be the same the formula is going to remain the same as uh, that is then for uh, the total kgs we are now going to multiply by one two three three floors okay so this is going to be three instead of instead of two so for the main bars of uh, c1 that is how we have done it we have done it for t16 and t12 that is complete so we'll move to now uh, the so-called the so-called links okay so links you can see there is a t802 200 t8 is the diameter 02 is the bar mark then 200 is now the interval in which those links have been placed so once you know that then we should be able to find the number okay so normally how do we go about the links they are t8 identification actually is uh, still c1 but then t8 the diameter is eight millimeters the number of the bars we should be able to find we should be able to find the number in just one bar and then you multiply by the number of columns that we have okay so this is how we go about that so we should be get we should get the total length okay we should get the total length and then we divide by the interval so the total length here you can see there is an arrow an arrow which is showing you where those bars are going to be placed this is the arrow where my cursor is pointing at and that arrow shows you that it's from there uh, this is top of the first floor i mean ground floor to where the 450 is so we should get the total length which is three meters and then we subtract 450 that is going to give us 25 50 we divide by the interval which is 200 okay so this is uh, 25 2550 divided by 200 okay and then uh, we add one so that we get the bars so this is 13.75 so when you have 13.75 we can call it 14 number bars okay so that is for one column but then there are a number of columns of the same uh, same type that is the c1 we multiply by multiply by 12 okay so the total number of bars is 168 then we now need to get the length okay when you want to get the length of uh, of a link okay the size of this column is 500 by 200 but you can see where the column the bars have been placed this is the bar that we're talking about where my cursor is pointing so we need to subtract what we call the cover reinforcement cover is that part of concrete that is allowed to be beyond the reinforcement bars to protect it from extremities of weather including corrosion and rusting and so on it's always given at the notes by the structural engineer you can only assume when it's not been given so you can always check to the notes and you will find what we call cover to reinforcement bases 50 millimeters columns is 40 millimeters so in this case the cover has been provided and it's 40 millimeters so we need to subtract the 40 millimeters from the total uh, from the dimensions of the reinforcement column in this case it's 500 we subtract 40 to the top and 40 to the bottom so that is a, a total of 80 that means here we are going to have 420 okay while to the bottom which is to the 200 we are going to have 200 minus 80 that is 120 so for 20 plus 120 okay so we have 0 0.42 plus 0 0.12 okay then we multiply by 2 because we're just basically getting the perimeter of that bar okay but then when you look at it properly you will see there are hooks okay so these hooks should also be added in this case I would like us to add hook of 
100 millimeters on either on either side okay so we add we add 0 0.1 times 2 to the hooks so that gives us a total length of 1.28 meters for the reinforcement uh, length of the of the links reinforcement length of the of the links what we've done get the perimeter but then in the perimeter consider the cover okay so 0 0.42 plus 0 0.12 then you multiply that by 2 then you add hooks on either sides so the total length therefore is going to be length of 1 times the number of the bars that we have we get that constant is still 162 and then uh, kgs therefore is going to be diameter squared times the total length divided by 162 okay in that case how many floors do we have of the same 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 uh, sizes i mean the the links so you need to confirm yeah it's rare that you find the links going to be different but you need to make sure that what you're saying is this case so this is uh, ground floor at ground floor level we have it it's showing to be uh, T8 first floor T8 then uh, second floor also we still have T8 and then uh, uh, and then uh, second floor third floor same T8 fourth floor also the same okay so those are five so that is two and then that is three okay I mean the number of floors that we are uh, multiplying it with it's from uh, this is from um, first and I mean ground to fourth floor so those are five those are five floors so the cages that we've done for one floor and then you multiply by total number of floors we get 424 okay well done so we go to uh, we go to the next column and the next column is uh, C2 okay C2 we agreed in our previous session that whatever that has been drawn is always superior to what has been written you will notice that we have 600 by 200 note but then the drawing is talking about 500 by 200 so this is what we are going to use okay so for our enforcement let's identify the enforcement bar that we have and we move on it's 12 to 20 for ground floor okay first floor is also 12 to 20 second floor is 12 to 20 when you go to third floor it's 10 to 16 fourth floor is also 10 to 16 fifth floor is 10 to 16 okay so that is why you need to con uh, consider the floors separately when you're doing reinforcement you will find there are these scenarios of different sizes for the reinforcement bars okay so we are going to uh, we are going to copy this and just make our edits okay to make our work easier and copy it here so this is now c2 because it's now column 2 and the bar we are talking about is t20 okay the size of that bar is 20 millimeters in diameter what about the number okay so for us to get the number we get for one this is the c2 okay once you've seen the c2 there are 12 12 of them okay t20 for the size the number let's see what we have so for the number it's equals to how many do we have this is 12 okay but for how many floors so it's 12 times actually it's 12 times uh, the number of columns columns are two in number because we're just doing for one floor and multiply by the other floors that have the same same uh, same same number so this is 12 for one column times the number of columns okay then for the length the height is the same the height the ceiling height of the, the this uh, this building is the same to be three meters we add the overlap okay that is for one bar then the formula is still in, in place the number the number of the columns times the length of one we get that this is 162 
and then uh, this one is going to be this one is going to remain the same d squared times the total length over 162 then uh, let's count how many floors are there of the same same number of numbered size of bars this is one this is two this is three okay so we have three floors we multiply by we multiply by three three number for the kgs that we've uh, calculated for the kgs that we've calculated here so this is three all right so we move to the next and that is also still c2 we paste it there c2 but then now it's uh c12 i mean uh, t16 yeah we've done the t20 but now we have t16 to be 10 10 number so one two three so it's 10 t16 okay that is the t16 diameter is 16 and then uh, the number let's see what we have for the number is equals to 10 times the column sorry 10 times column c2 how many are they they are two okay then the length is going to be the same which is uh, 3 meters plus the overlap and then now the total length the formula is still in place where we get length of uh, 1 times the total number for 1 remember we are dealing with every floor separately okay and then you multiply by the number of columns that are of the same same type of reinforcement and then uh, this is also in place now uh, we count the number of floors that are having the same number of uh, type of bars so this is one this is two this is three okay so what we've done we multiply by three the kgs are found for one times times three so that is the end of the main bars and then for the other bars i mean the links we copy that which we have done and then paste it here so this is uh, now c2 to mean column column 2 there t8 the diameter is 8 millimeters so we want to see this is going to remain the same because the interval if we check at the interval it's still 200 for the t8 all of them is 200 millimeters okay so that means it's still 14 for every uh, for one floor times the number of columns okay the number of columns for c2 is 2 all right and then uh, we do the length the length is going to remain the same because it's still 500 by 200 column so what we have done for the previous one is remaining the same and then uh, this is now the total length the formula is still in place what we've done for the number times the, times the length of one this the uh, that is now conversion factor is still constant and then uh, let's see for this uh, d squared times total length over 162 that is still in place and then uh, how many floors are now here this is longer this is having an additional floor so instead of five we have six floors okay instead of five we have six floors so the uh, weight of one uh, one uh, one uh, one floor weight of the reinforcement bars on one floor times five so this is also I mean this is now six because it's an additional one floor so that is the weight of the same so we go to uh, we go to uh, the next is a c3 okay the next is a c3 let's see where it starts yeah c3 is here this is column c3 so the same same argument that we had this the size is uh, indicated on the drawing is 500 by 200 so we, that is the one that we are supposed to use so in this case for c3 we have 12 to 16 that is ground floor at first floor 12 to 16 second floor 12 to 16 third floor 12 to 16 fourth floor 12 to 16 fifth floor also it's 12 to 16 so in this case we have all the floors having the similar size of reinforcement bar for the for the main bars so that is a 
a plus for us we will copy this we'll copy what we did for the other one we paste it here so this is going to be C uh, this is going to be C3 okay this is going to be C3 instead of uh, C2 the size of the reinforcement is uh, 16 it's T16 okay times that is now going to be times 6 actually for the number of flaws because it's similar to the other one so this is a uh, 16 so how many are they on one floor I mean uh, on one floor there are 12 and it's uniform for the rest of the floors okay so in one it's 12 not 10 12 then you multiply by the number of columns on every floor okay for C3 and uh, they are two okay so the number is 12 for 1 times the number of columns that we have the length is still remaining the same because the height the ceiling height is uh, constant and then uh, we do this this is now uh, the number of length times length of one times the number this is 162 and this is going to remain the same uh, so in this case it's supposed to be six because there are six number of flaws with the same uh, with the same same diameter of the reinforcement bars so this we do times six that way and then we go to uh, this is now t8 copy and uh, we'll paste it here so this is going to be c3 okay c3 t8 so the first uh, this is now diameter diameter is eight millimeters for the number of bars it's still going to be around 14 because the ceiling height has not changed for every floor and it's constant that is 14 then times the number of columns in this case c2 c3 i mean c3 they are two in number once we have that uh, so the number we've already calculated and this is it and then uh, for the length of one it's still remaining the same because nothing has changed and then uh, this is now the total length total length in this case the formula is still in place uh, the length of one times the number of those bars and 162 and then uh, this now the formula is still in place as well times six yeah in this case there are six number of uh, flaws that we have okay so basically that is now uh, the complete work of uh, reinforced steel reinforcement for superstructure columns so what we need uh, you realize that when you're doing the reinforcement bars uh, for uh, the reinforcement bars we don't need to we are not required to uh, specify that this is t16 in columns this is t8 in columns and so on therefore we will need to do all the reinforcement bars for the superstructure and then we now categorize them depending on sizes only not the elements where they are going to be placed so in that case we like to uh, for what we've done for the columns that should just be enough but then now moving forward we now do for the rest of the other elements including beams we are doing beams next for superstructure beams which they are also quite a number after we've done for the beams then we are going to now do for uh, do for the staircases which is also a very interesting bit then we'll add we'll now assort the reinforcement bars depending on the sizes only not depending on on the where they are occurring so that means we should stop at what we've done for the columns until we do again for the reinforcement piece beams and then the rest of the other items that i've mentioned thereafter we'll add them together and then we have we enter them in the bills of quantities what i'm saying what we've done now is enough we wait till we do for the beams and we do our sorting of the reinforcement steel reinforcement bars together in our upcoming session thank you very much for watching thank you very much for learning for every question that you might have 
please put it on the description part so that I answer to it and you're able to learn even more from this particular channel and I want to plead with you before you leave kindly make a subscription so that you don't miss any of these upcoming videos thank you very much have a great time till we meet again in our next session that is coming very soon bye bye